wonderful night for baseball City Field in Flushing. Welcome to New York City the Nats and the Mets and these guys with rocking the curly W's in the house know how good the Nats have been over the years in this yard and how good Gio has been more on him in a minute Bob and FP a weekend of baseball on the road the Nats have to keep on winning and hope for help from elsewhere. Yeah, not going to be easy if they're going to pull this off. I mean, they could do it. 34 games left, eight and a half games back. Doesn't look great, but when you look at what Fangraph says, a 7% chance, eight and a half games back. A lot of teams in front of them in the wild card, but look at the schedule. 21 against the East, 22 against teams over 500. So you're telling me there's a chance, but they're going to have to play great. And if the Nats are in dire straits, I would offer to you that Ryan Zimmerman is the Sultan of Swing. He's getting it done with the bat lately. Homers, doubles, you name it. He's been fantastic since coming back off the DL. He's healthy. He's locked in. He's been swinging the bat great. He's hitting fourth tonight. So in the clean spot again, you look at July 31st against the Mets. He went two for five with three RBIs. He hit a home run. But this one, 1695, career franchise record for hits. And then he finished it with a home run. So Ryan Zimmerman got all his parts working. He's on time. He's been doing everything. Yeah, he took the road show to Wrigley Field, 25 times now he's hit two homers or more in a game so that led the Nats to a big 9 4 win on that Friday a couple of weeks ago so Ryan keeps on slugging then he goes oppo to win a game yeah what happened is 11th career walk off home run 15th career walk off hit the parade the party whatever you want to call it at home plate he thrilled us all against the Phillies so Ryan's locked in check out these numbers for Ryan Zimmerman since his return yeah July 20th averaging one RBI per game couple of doubles lots of home runs the on base percentage and the slugging what we know Ryan is capable of doing hey he's healthy that's the big key for him some other healthy bats Matt Wieters in the lineup tonight Bryce Harper getting it done as well yeah three and four looks good tonight right Bryce Harper loves playing in New York Ryan Zimmerman hitting behind him so we'll see what happens tonight with those guys hitting back to back and Gio loves this place almost had a no hitter here years ago 16 starts 11 and 1 with a 178 ERA he's only given up 20 earned runs in over 100 innings pitched in this ballpark can Gio do it and get the weekend off to a good start more on the Nats and the Mets straight ahead. few extra minutes to visit with you as we get ready for the Nats and the Mets. First of all, let's have a look at some of the game notes and the season series. It's dead even. The Nats have a 15 run differential and a lot of that coming, of course, 
from that big win at home when they scored 25. The Nats, this is amazing. 51 and 19 here. And the starters, five innings pitched or less in seven of the last 10 games. The bullpen is overworked. The Nats could use a long one from Geo. Tanner Roark goes tomorrow. So Geo, 15 and 5 FP, career against the Mets, but almost unbeatable right here. At Players Weekend, they got the jerseys on, but look at Gio at City Field. He loves to play here, 11 and 1 with a 178 ERA. Near no hitter a few years back. I think that was 2012, but Gio looking to do something like that here and tighten it up after a tough start last time. And when you talk about Jason Vargas for the Mets, I can't see his hat. Can you see that? People hitting 380 against his fastball this year, so look for the heater early and get on it. Yeah, so. Against right handers the Nats are getting it done against lefties not this guy doesn't throw hard he preys on your impatience as a hitter and wants you to roll ground balls over to the pull side. Let's talk about Harper and Rendon. They're pulling it they're hitting it the other way combined lately against the Mets this year 373 seven homers they've driven in 24 together 21 runs scored. Harper Rendon and of course we've already touched on Ryan Zimmerman. So the Nats looking for damage broken bat or not with a home run here at City Field. Brought to you by PNC Bank. There's no better time to act than today. PNC, make today the day. Beautiful evening in New York. One of the best we've ever had here. As we're getting into the late days of August <laughs> 2018. Did you see Blue Eye right there on the phone? Max Scherzer making a call. His nickname's Blue Eye. I love it. So they're, uh, you know, playing baseball this weekend and wearing their players uniforms the ones with the nicknames on the back chip Hale, love it mom and dad on the sleeve of Trey Turner it is absolutely amazing here tonight it's going to be 79 at game time with the humidity down at 44 percent the Nats are six in the league and hitting fifth in runs fifth in homers and Trey Turner I've been calling him a hit collector lately he has 140 of them 10th in the league and last 12 games against the East hitting for average getting on base scoring runs after stealing some bags. So looking for Trey Turner who's in the leadoff spot tonight and Gio batting ninth behind Wilmer Defoe. Jason Vargas is 35 years of age. He's 88 and 89 career but 0 and 3 in five games two starts against Washington. Yeah this is his sixth home start this year. He's one and four with a six seven five at City Field 15 earned runs in 20 innings. So Matt's looking to do some damage here. Look at what opponents are hitting 325 against Jason Vargas. A good night to hit. A defense for the Mets tonight Bautista Jackson Bruce the outfield Rosario McNeil up the middle Frazier Flores at the corners Kevin Plowicki doing the catching. 
Jay Bruce back for the first time tonight. He's been on the DL since June 18th with a sore right hip. The Mets want to see him play first base a lot here moving forward at the end of the season. They want to decide whether he's going to be their first baseman for next year or their right fielder. So Bruce is playing right field. For and they've had Todd Frazier back for a while now. They've been without him for an extended period of time. You might remember a graphic we showed you at home during the homestand as Davey Martinez ball club again tries to get over the 500 mark. The Mets are the only team in baseball who've lost more player games to the disabled list than have the Nets. Mickey Callaway's club 56 and 71. Mets have a problem at home. They just haven't been very good. 26 and 39 at home. So there's the tail of the tape for the season series. Nats big advantages in the batting average, the runs, home runs are pretty even in the starter ERA. Neither of them great, but the Nats better. So it's Vargas, three and eight with a 767 ERA. Bunch of the Nats will be facing him for the first time. Zimmerman and Weeders, the only men in the lineup who have faced the lefty in the past. About three bags from Triple Trey. We are underway with a strike at 7 11 p.m. Trey, career 250 against the New Yorkers. And you won't see any blazing 90 mile an hour plus fastballs coming from this lefty tonight. No, average is 87. You talk about the off speed, two opponents hitting 313 against this curveball and 276 against the change. Two and one. Let's have the fifth highest staff ERA in the league, 4.23. So the players weekend they wear custom nickname jerseys they can also specially design their hats their socks and their cleats and the right sleeve patch. You write a name of a person or organization that was instrumental to your development so we'll see all that here this weekend. Turner left side cut off by Frazier he knew he had to get rid of it in a hurry and Carlos Torres calls out Turner on a close call at first. Yeah I don't. I don't know if it translates well on TV, but the Mets hats, they look like a bunch of deer hunters out there. They got the blaze orange on it. It's neon orange as you look at Trey flying down the line. That was so close. Yeah. But the way we're looking at it from the booth, I mean, it is bright. Well, when they came out at the start of the game, I thought we were in a construction zone. <laughs> yeah, no, no Met is getting hit by a car tonight. No way. Here's Anthony Rendon. <laughs> Anthony 356 over his last 14 games. And that's what Vargas will try to do. Try to bust guys in with the fastball. Bob, it's Vargi. Come on. Vargi? It's Vargi. Check out his jersey. Not Vargas. I say we call him by the nicknames if they want to wear him, we got to call him. Last year they called him all star. He won 18 games for Kansas City. This one to center for Austin Jackson. Ajax made the play Bob come on tighten it up. Yeah he he ran a clean route. It, So Bryce ninth in the league in on base percentage at 380 second in homers with 30 seventh in RBI's with 81. He wasn't Mondo last year was he wasn't he like big kid or something. Well, that's his nickname. He's been, that's his nickname since he was a kid. So nice. Lefty lefty matchup. And a tapper to the right side. His uncle gave him that nickname when he was a child playing T ball with Cubs third baseman Chris Bryant. For whatever reason, yeah. the name stuck, and now he's wearing it on his jersey. His cleats are awesome, by the way. That yeah, team probably wasn't any good, were they? Yeah, Chris Bryant, Bryce Harper, and T ball. 
just winning 47 to nothing every game. And the bat, look at the bat. One one to Bryce. Shift on. <laughs> we got a lot going on with the jersey, the bat, and the cleats now, with Bryce. This is fun. I like it. Kids weekend. All right, there's his cleats this weekend. Check out the leather ones. Those are for his dad, Ron, and the boots that he wore to work or wears to work. Bat flies over the screen into the seats, and Harper grounds out. That bat was heading for those kids. The dad reached across. It was going right for the kids, and he saved them. Unbelievable play by that fan right there. It was going right for those two kids. I watched the whole thing. That dad's a hero. Shortstop Rosario on the charge, and Bryce Harper is gone. So are the Nets in the top of the first. Geo going out to work. to work get y'all set on the Mets lineup and the Nats defense in a second first pitch a strike to Ahmed Rosario the shortstop all right 32 years old six foot 205 there's the arsenal tough one for Gio last start four and two thirds against the Marlins gave up a season high eight runs on ten hits 12 to one loss that was the Sunday loss he had tried to make it all right here tonight against the Mets now breaking ball stayed away. Rosario one for seven career against Gio. And then the fastball fades way outside ball three. Pretty good rip by Rosario trying to battle his way out of an 0 for 12. Speedy leadoff guy hitting 242, six triples on the year. And a ball driven to right. Looked like Bryce was going to challenge it for a moment, then he decided to pull up and take it on a hop. So we continue with the Mets lineup, as mentioned. Back in there, Todd Frazier, who's clean up, and then Jay Bruce behind him. Joey Bats, Jose Bautista, 290 career against the Nats, and he wants to get a job somewhere next year. Starting to hit the ball well. 215 in 79 games with the Mets, but nine homers and 37 RBIs. Next up, a good looking young infielder by the name of Jeff McNeil. They've given him some playing time here, and they want to take a good long look at him between now and the end of September. He's had some injury issues in his career, kind of a late bloomer. But at the big league level, 
29 games hitting 330. Yeah, between August 19th and August 22nd, Carp, he recorded eight straight hits. That's a franchise rookie record, so eight straight hits. Runner on the move. And Matt Wieters can't handle it. Ahmed Rosario will have his 15th steal. Not the best jump either. He would have been out by a mile had Wieters been able to handle this sinker from Gio Gonzalez. Did you see how long he waited at first before he broke? 15th stolen base. Fortunate. Jeff McNeil's on an eight game hitting streak. He's going to rip one foul off that screen down there. All right, here's the Nats defense tonight. Behind Gio Soto, Taylor Harper's your outfield. Turner Rendon, left side, Defoe Zimmerman, right side, Matt Wieters behind the plate. Michael Taylor, Roman Central tonight. The base dealers are in there this evening and a breaking ball. It's going to be a productive out for the rookie as he grounds out to Wilmer Defoe. Third base Rosario with Wilmer Flores coming up. That's going infield in here in the first inning. Check this out. With guy back is Rendon. And now he's going to come creeping in. They yeah, usually see this if you're facing a Jacob DeGrom. Good fastball. Gio whistles one in there to Flores, who's six for 28 against him. Already one start here this year, April 17th. Nats won five to two. He went five and a third, gave up eight hits, but only two runs. Pitch count got him out, but he got the W, and so did the Nats. And a 1 1. Ripped for a base hit. Even with the infield back, that might have been a knock for Flores, who drives in his 48th run. Supposed to be fastball in. It was a little bit away and up, and to get him on, stolen base, get him over, get him in inning for the Mets. That'll bring in Todd Frazier. By the way, it's Mike Fultonavich and Dan Straley tonight, Braves at Miami. Frazier getting hot now that he's healthy again. 14 RBIs his last 17 games. You know the infield in carp could have been as simple as the Nats are 50 and 23 when they score first and 14 and 41 when the opponent scores first. So maybe Davey Martinez thinking hey we got to score first and not let them score first. Two and oh. So last week and a half for Frazier. Playing in just his 83rd game of the year. Two one. Man, we have so much going on we here do. from a fashion standpoint tonight. We got oh, Todd Father's his nickname, but he's got the <laughs> Godfather on his cleats. <laughs> that is Marlon awesome. Brando in the box. Those, those are my favorite cleats in the history of the game right there. I mean hands down winner. You get Don Coleone on your cleats. Hey it doesn't get better than that. If Mike Rizzo had cleats those would be them. In a different color of course. Yeah. That is something else. 
Well, Gio, maybe he can throw a ground ball that he can't refuse. Instead, it's a drive to center, but he didn't get it. Michael A. Taylor back for the second out. <laughs> I'm being told that Tony Soprano's on his right cleat, so maybe that'll be something to look forward to later in this ballgame. So Gio will face Jay Bruce. Late since June 17th. So it's been two months and seven days. Had a seven game rehab. Back in there for the Mets tonight. Lefty, lefty, shift on anyway. Swing and a miss, 1 1. Yeah, on the DL since June 18th with a sore right hip. That must have been a really sore right hip. That's a long time. Just a little bit up. And lately, Gio's kind of been getting on the side of that curveball where it's kind of rolling in there. When he gets on top of it, really pulls the shades down. That's when it's the nasty one. Pretty good location there for the foul ball. Bruce had 29 homers here last year before they traded him to Cleveland. He had seven more there, coupled in the division series for the Indians. And then back to New York he went signed a three year nearly 40 million dollar deal this past January. What if Zib put Mr. Walk off on the back of his jersey. You think he'd get drilled. I bet nobody could convince him to put that on the back of his jersey. I know but he should. 2 2. Just come up in the ninth inning. Well he couldn't do it on the road but at home it would be. Cool if he came up with Mr. Walk. He just turned around showed his back to the pitcher and then went deep. I mean, if anybody could do it, he could. Yeah. On the road, it would have to be go ahead home run. He'd get drilled so fast. On the move in a moment, Wilmer Flores. This ball popped into short center. Defoe out, Taylor in, and that's it. The Mets will get a run after the Rosario hit and a steal. And you're looking at what Ryan Zimmerman is doing to pitchers lately. Clean up spot tonight. Get ready, top of the second. Soto and Weeders will follow our first baseman. <laughs> All right, buddy, up the escalator in the Jackie Robinson rotunda. Woo! You're late. Get to your seat. Let's go. Yeah, he's in the seat. That was moments oh, ago, right. just moments ago. And Ryan Zimmerman settles in. 18 for his last 50 in 15 games. 
17 RBIs over that time. And as we mentioned during our opening segment, 23 RBIs his last 23 games. Knocking cool. on the door of 40 right here. Cool looking bat. It looks aluminum, doesn't it? We'll know when he hits it. That is interesting. That's an aluminum bat. He is disqualified from this contest. There's that off speed by Vargas. One ball, two strikes. Lefty career, 88 and 89. This is 243rd big league start. California guy, born in Apple Valley. Went to Cal State Long Beach. Good take by Ryan. Been a double digit winner in the big leagues four times. Finally made the All Star team last year for KC. 18 and 11. Way inside. The 87 looks quicker than 87. Trying to speed you up in. I think. Generally speaking, off a guy like Vargas, you're just looking for something elevated, belt high. If it's starting lower than that, it's going to be a ball down. Just from gravity. Base hit. They were in the shift with Jeff McNeil playing up the middle, and Ryan Zimmerman tucked it in right where a second baseman usually would be. So, day off yesterday, a little dinged up back here tonight, and pick it up right where he left off. The hottest hitter for the Nats. It's the first knock of the night, and. There goes a the no hitter. Dan Coco being the fashionista that he is all over the bats and the gear this weekend. Yeah Bob I talked to Ryan about that bat as he was getting ready to head out, head out to BP. Some of these guys special orders specific colors designs for these bats for players weekend. Ryan was looking at it in the dugout. I said oh it's nice man. He said I don't know. They just brought it to me. I didn't request it. It was just waiting for me in my locker. <laughs> it's got a knock in it. It's not the arrow. That thing look cool, and so does Juan Soto's. Big rip on the 1 0 pitch. Maybe time for him to do some damage against the Mets. He missed a couple of the series. Early because he was still in the minor leagues. He's seven for 25 against New York. Rookie ranks way up there. No rookie in the National League hitting 300, though the Reds' Jesse Winker is at 299. Two of them, Acuna and Villanueva, are in 20 home run range. Asking for time pretty quickly there. Whatever you think about this season and however it ends up, who knows? But one of the positives, the brightest spot is stay in the batter's box right now, the emergence of Juan Soto. Yeah, everyday left fielder for years to come. Target away, 2-2. Two, two. And he'll just flick it out of play the other way. Off the pitch that jammed him. There's the Nissan pitch cast on the AP. Number six, well inside. 
What an eye. Calmly watching the breaking ball go low and away. So Bogart just had a quick word with Ryan Zimmerman, who has a medium lead at first. Nobody out. up the middle Nick Lentz the umpire barely got out of the way and the Nats are in business with Zimmerman and Soto back to back singles. such a good at bat by Juan Soto what new heads up Nick I won't say ugly finder that'd be super cruel but watch the at bats by Juan Soto right back up the middle spread out no stride short compact swing and coming right at you whoa Ole. That'll wake you up. I think the umpires should have nicknames on their shirts. His would be look out. Yeah. Not ugly finder. That was super mean. Matt Wieters has had only 32 right handed at bats this year. Six hits. Seventeen for his last 50. And that's up and in. So Zimmerman with his base hit, three for five against Vargas. You saw the Weeders number. Those five hits and a walk. Matt did step to the left side of the plate for one round of batting practice. This afternoon, I know I've asked you this before because you hit from both sides. How do you find that balance, that sweet spot between how much you work from either side of the plate? Well, it depends where you're feeling better at. He, he's probably thinking I mean, he's going to have two at bats against the bullpen left-handed tonight, so you work on that. If your right-handed swing's feeling good, sometimes batting practice can throw you into a funk. So if you're feeling locked in right-handed, you'll take your batting practice left-handed, even though lefty's pitching. And I've always thought Matt's swing is more natural right hand than it is left. I mean, you saw that swing right there. And I always had to work on left handed more carp because that wasn't my natural side. Right handed, you feel like you could roll out of bed and make contact. Left handed was always a battle. So most switch hitters have a dominant side where they feel better. Well, he's had some good rips here. One and two, nobody out. First inning, 12 pitches, six strikes. And the Nats have made him work here. He's thrown 18 pitches. Second inning without getting an out. Two and two. Soto did a great job of working the count. Now Weeders as well. Michael A. Taylor getting a start tonight. Speed to burn in the lineup this evening. Defoe behind him. It's good hack. You see how they're swinging though? I mean that 87 is playing up from 87 because of all the slow stuff early and then he tries to speed you up late. But Matt's on him. Those are good swings. And he hits one to left. Kind of got him down around the end of the bat. So Bautista makes the grab. No advancement by any runners. One out. All right, we're getting closer to this night. It's going to be fun. Jason Worth Appreciation Day at Nats Park, Saturday, September 8th.
Cubs in town, 7 5. That's going to be a heck of a homestand. Get to the ballpark early. The team's going to duck Jason the Nats. Ring of Honor. Once you're in the ring, you're in the ring forever. Special ticket will get you that t shirt right there. Visit nationals.com for your Jason Worth emoji t shirt. Michael A. Taylor. Elevated, but in the zone, and Michael questioning Scott Berry, the 13 year veteran who has the plate tonight. for the umpires it's not nice clean it up let's go umpires are people too that's right they never get to go sit in the dugout either Taylor third base side and it goes foul Todd Frazier was playing it all the way crew chief Paul Noward over on that side they don't have a home game ever either they're on the road for 162 games yeah whoever cheers for them there's Paul Noward one of our favorites 22nd year in the big leagues for Paul sweet mullet he was we've been together since April he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet they don't make him any better than him One and two to Michael A. Good take. They're taking off from LaGuardia right over the ballpark tonight. You think? Some nights they're out beyond the center field and right field, but they're going right turn and right over us tonight. Two two pitch. Up and in, Michael couldn't get to it. First strikeout for Vargas, two on, two out. And the second inning with the Nats down by a run is up to Wilmer Defoe. Wilmer, 258 left handed, but only 14 for 74 this side of the plate. He does have a homer in four RBIs. did agree that the homer he hit at the ballpark the other night was the longest he's ever hit batting left handed well up into the second deck right field after Stevenson's blast Try to make you aware of the inside fastball and then use all the off speed on the other side. And, and if you're a right handed hitter against Vargas, you just have to disregard the inner half. It's 87, you'll get there naturally. So, what do you do? You look middle away, you try to elevate him, and you're thinking up the middle with everything or the other way. If you think pull against a guy that's showing you that fastball, then it'll be tough to stay on everything else. Off the end of the bat, and Wilmer Flores peels off while he was reaching for it. And Kevin Flawwecki, the catcher, picks it off. Nets strand two.
University College. Nationals moment in history, September 9th of 13. Gio was dealing. He would give up here in New York. This barely fair base hit. Adam LaRoche trying to get to it. Zach Lutz dropping one first baseline. The Nats would win it 9 0. That was Gio's 10th win of the year. He went 10 and 6 with that brilliant one hit, two walk, eight strikeout shutout of the Mets. Austin Jackson. 326 as a Met in 26 games. Working quickly tonight. And a ball hit well to left. Austin Jackson gives the Mets their second consecutive leadoff single. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons, league leaders. Lowest ERA at any road ballpark. So Clayton Kershaw at the Giants, Tom Seaver at San Diego, Cliff Melton, and those are the Boston Braves way back when in Braves Field. Gio here and Joe Negro. Also at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Cliff Clavin. Pretty good at Braves Field. Not that surprised to see Jack Murphy Stadium on that list. Big ballpark out in the middle of Mission Valley. And that place was a dead ballpark for baseballs on an evening. Yeah, day games it flew though. Yeah. Night games, yeah, it was tough. One ball, one strike to Jose Bautista. Tough to see the ball today, there, though. Hitting. Breaking ball smothered by Weeders. By the way, Jake Garrietta pitching for the Phillies tonight at Toronto. They got an early run. Blue Jays have tied it. They're 1 1 in the third. Braves and Marlins are still scoreless. They're in the third inning in Miami. Did you see today that the Rays and the Dodgers have the same exact record? 67 and 61. And Dodgers have lost three in a row. They're four and a half back of Arizona. The poor Rays who've won five in a row are 22 and a half back of Boston. Isn't it's that crazy though? It's around the $75 million payroll versus almost $180 million payroll. Same record. A mile high, left side. Looks like Trey's got the beat on it. First out, second inning. All right, as you enjoy a Miller Lite after work, look forward to the whole true moment later in this game. Kevin Plawecki, 55 ball games, 226. With that out, Jose Bautista now one for eight career against Gio. Great location on the off speed. Long first inning for our lefty, 24 pitches, 13 strikes. Runner goes out of play right side. They definitely have something on Geo's move. That's twice. Although the first jump wasn't that good, so maybe. Austin Jackson just guessed right there. That was a pretty good jump.
Good 0 2 pitch just missing away. At least giving the hitter something to think about. Our defense pretty straight away here for the number eight hitter. Two two. Off the end of the bat, and it'll drop in right center. Jackson stopping at second. Bryce got to it quickly. Pitcher coming up, two on, one out. Not real critical right there, but if Austin Jackson had a better read, you feel like with his speed, he could have been on third. But with the pitcher hit, maybe he decided not to advance it but if you know where your outfielders are playing you see where that ball is going to land sometimes you see guys gamble and go first to third on that he decided to stay at second. Vargas four career sacrifice punts most of his career in the American League. He can handle a bat. He's a 235 career hitter, small sample size, and that's in there from Gio 1 1. Deadens it really well. Weeders tells Gio 1 1 1, and there it goes to first base. Defoe on the receiving end. Well done by Vargas. That'll bring in Ahmed Rosario, who singled the other way first time up, stole a bag, and scored on a Flores base hit. Would you rather face him here or the lefty on deck? First base open, two outs. You have your choice if you're Gio Gonzalez. Yeah. Rookie on deck with 98 career at bats. Good high gas right there. Yeah, he's just going to fastball him up, and if he wants to swing, he's can swing if not he gets his base but right now Ahmed Rosario is forcing the issue you can see another high fastball this is three above the zone you can throw another one up there it's got good late giddy up Mercedes Benz on the pitch cast. He started Carlos Torres says he stopped.
Wonder where this one's going. They might be able to get him to chase a curveball in the dirt here. It changes eye level after all those heaters up. See what they decide on. Huh? That's one of the most interesting AB pitch casts we've ever seen. Everything within a couple of balls of each other up there. And there's another one. thing about going all fastballs up is whoever's standing on second can get the signs. It, you know, if you throw the same pitch that many times in a row, if I'm standing on second for five or six pitches, I got your signs. Just looking for where the one is. He gets it out to center, and Michael A is there. So Geo battles his way through a long second. He'll lead off. One nothing Mets. has three hits this year. The day after the Nats win and scores seven runs or more, you get 50% off. Regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com. Promo code NATS50. Enjoy the quality pizza you've come to expect from your locally owned and operated Papa John's. See, Gio's shoes, Carp, that looks like a kid's shoes, doesn't it? The shoelaces, different colors, I like it. Something you'd see on a playground somewhere. Pretty cool. And that one to the outside edge at 85. And 85, 85, 86 for his second strikeout. Nats go two for nine first time around. All right, so September 8th is Jason Worst Day. It's also Taste of the World Day. That returns to Nats Park. You can celebrate DC's diverse community with pregame International Food Festival featuring food and drink samples from participating embassies. Nats Cup 705. You get that apron too if you come visit nationals.com. An apron could come in handy with some of the food. They'll be there crushing. We're eating out of a hat. That's safe and healthy. <laughs> I guess it depends on who was wearing it before. They don't care. Their kids. Five second rule. If they drop the popcorn, they're still eating it. 
working it. Trey Turner. Down to the third base side for Todd Frazier. He throws out Trey for the second time. Anthony Rendon in to hit top of the third. We're into the eight o'clock hour here. Beautiful baseball night in New York. 79 degrees. BCFP DK on Masson first of three with the Mets and the first of six on this trip. What would your jersey say? See you later. I guess. If you, I don't know. Carp maybe. D Dan's would say Diva. Oh. Or Mass and Dan. Oh. Either one works. Wow. <laughs> Yours would say Nicknamer. <laughs> You'd give everybody a nickname. My You'd be fighting Hydra. My, my minor league nickname was Saint, which was not even close to being right. I'm like, yeah. Make a note of the special starting time tomorrow, 4:05, Mass and two. Tanner Roark and Zach Wheeler, who's getting rave reviews from all the Mets broadcasters we've talked to about the way he's throwing lately. And Tanner Roark, we're giving them the same report on him. And then we fought. Yeah. Kind of like Anchor Man, we met him out in the parking lot. And it all got settled and killed Keith Hernandez with a trident. Two and one. Rendon touches one deep to center and just short of the track. Jackson, the Nets, six in a row retired, middle of the third, one nothing Mets. How Juan Soto has been making an effort to get better defensively, asking for pointers from Bob Henley and Davey Martinez and working on that element of his game a lot. Well, one pointer that Davey gave to his rookie outfielder deals with what Davey calls the circle. He suggested that Juan picture that there's a circle around his feet in the outfield. And after each pitch, he should take a step outside the circle. Now, beyond keeping him from getting physically stagnant out there, Davey says stepping outside the circle allows an outfielder to kind of mentally reset, take a quick mental breather, and then you step back into the circle, locked in and ready for the next pitch, guys. Michael A. Taylor well out of his circle, Dan, and two steps short of one of the deepest parts of this park. Bottom of the third underway, Jeff McNeil made a bid for his third big league home run. They just kind of step out, relax. Maybe interact with a few fans and then lock in as the pitcher gets the sign and starts his delivery. It's a learned thing, Carp, to be able to concentrate for 100 plus pitches a game. You take one pitch off as a defender at the major league level, the ball finds you. You know, in the minor leagues, when you're 19, 20, and 21, that's one of the things you learn. Hey, ball's coming to me, ball's coming to me, ball's coming, ball one. And then you take a little break. 
but that focus for the whole game, not thinking about your last at bat, not think about I'm leading off the next inning, but to be in the moment and every pitch is coming to me, that's something you learn throughout your career. So you're talking about a 19 year old out there that's probably learning how to concentrate and focus on defense every single pitch. Take a little bit of time off, the time between pitches. With certain pitchers, it's more time than others, but be ready every single pitch. Take a break, be ready, take a break. That's good stuff from Davey Martinez. Great report by Dan. And as you've mentioned many times, don't take your recent at bat out there with you if it didn't go well. See me trying to make up for calling Madiva right there. Great report, Dan. Wilmer Depot had to fight that ball hard to his left. Scooted on the mound and then got up the middle, two down. All right, trucker cap, Friday, August 31st, Nats Brewers. You get an apron, a hat, a Jason Ward t-shirt. You could have your whole fall wardrobe if you come out to Nats Park here pretty soon. You gotta be 21 years older to get this one. So that's presented by Budweiser. Get your tickets at nationals.com. You wear the hat with the Worth shirt and then the apron over that and you are set. And then the pajamas for at night. Wow. Yeah. We're we are outfitting all of DC next home stand. So yeah. come to the ballpark. Local we'll shopping malls yeah. into a panic right yep. now. Online How are we gonna sell anything this yep. winter? Todd Frazier lined out to Michael A. Taylor first time. We need some shoes. We need a shoe giveaway. Yeah, these are the greatest cleats ever. Did we get Tony Soprano on the right one yet? Is it really Tony? I can't see. Todd, can you step out for us? Are those cement cleats? Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. Crew doesn't miss anything. And right now, Gio not missing his spots either. He strikes out Frazier looking. Bryce is next. Here come the middle innings. One nothing Mets. That first time up Mondo with the broken bat. He had a home run here with the broken bat. This time he grounded out, but I was talking about dad of the year. This father in the stands saves his sons or his kids. Watch this play. I mean, this is the play of the day. It's going right for his kids and he knocks it away at the last second. That's what I was talking about last wow. time. So how about that dad with the Mets jersey on as the nomination for dad of the year? And then the other fan who picked up the bat gave it back to him which was awesome. So the play of the year for us 100 percent fiber optic network 100 percent phenomenal. Does it get Fios.com or Fios by Verizon Xmo. Yeah play of the year for sure. He's a hero. He's seen bats do damage. Wait the kids don't have the bat or is that guy just borrowing it. He's just taking pictures. Are you sure. OK. He's borrowing it. He's trying to get Bryce in the background with the bat. Aha. It's all about the gram, Bob. Oops. Oops. Broke it again. 
and now stab the kid in the leg with it. Everybody, now he's hurt. <laughs> everybody gets a piece now. <laughs> he said, I survived the first time. A fan just stabbed me in the leg with it. Look at, look at. Wait a minute. My dad saved my life. He handed me the bat back, and it got me. Future broadcaster. He knows <laughs> right where the camera is. Well How done. cute is that kid? Boy, giving us a Soto stare down. 2 1. That curveball in there, two balls, two strikes. <laughs> that kid is from New York, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Take that camera off me. Mr. Chuck. Strike three call on a fastball. Harper, some words for Scott Berry as he leaves. When Bryce is locked in, he knows the strike zone. Let's see it again. As well as any hitter I've ever seen. And if he's arguing, you know it was close, and that one was close. Ryan Zimmerman base hit first time. Wilmer Flores 30 feet off the first base bag. Up the middle again, Jeff McNeil and Ryan hit one right between them first time up. He's now hitting 264. Early in the count, he tried to pull one to tie the game there. Up in the zone in there. Blue Jays have taken a 3 1 lead over to over Philadelphia in Toronto. Fifth inning there. Still no score in the Atlanta Miami game. Fourth inning. And he drops one down and away from Ryan Zimmerman. And four of the last six batters have been struck out by Jason Vargas. Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers. Donating $250 to the Children's National Health System for the first 200 homers hit by the Nats this season. They're at 153. Lexus experience amazing. Soto base it up the middle first time. He also took a shot on the first strike he saw. Try to jack one out of here. Easy takes the way he's seen it, two and one. He just stepped his front foot out of the front of the batter's box and took that practice swing. Good pitch by Vargas didn't give in with a 3 1 heater down the middle. And he frisbees another one in there. Vargas strikes out the side Harper Zimmerman and Soto. The fourth inning of Nationals baseball brought to you by the all wheel drive. Rab for Toyota. What drives you through New York City? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. Wow.
enter to win a meet and greet with Davey Martinez. Presented by Hilton Hotels, get 20% off Nats tickets with the Capital Adventure Package from Hilton. Gio back to work, bottom of the fourth. Amazing success here. And the big hook misses to Jay Bruce. Look at that, three Nats topping the list. Tim Hudson, most of that with Atlanta. Julio Tehran, of course, a brave. That's a two hopper out to Wilmer Defield on the shift in right field. So Bruce, fly ball to center. That hopper, he's 0 for 2. And next up, Austin Jackson. Single to left by Ajax first time. Busted up an 0 for 9 for him. There you go. Three relieved Mets in this game. Rosario base hit first inning. He was 0 for 12. Plowecki was 0 for 10. Base hit second inning. After the 0 for 9 broken up by Jackson. And Gio goes 2 0 oh to the second hitter here in the fourth inning. The Mets have been swinging it since the break. They've scored 172 runs. That's the most in baseball since the All Star break. Offense hasn't been their problem, so Gio doing a nice job so far just keeping them to one. The Nats are third in all of baseball in the 170 runs scored. And the Nats have been hitting around 300 at Nationals Park since the break. Long run for Bryce Harper. Grabs it right at the edge of the track heading into foul ground for the second out. So tomorrow it's Tanner Roark and Zach Wheeler. Jeffrey Rodriguez and lefty Steven Matz on Sunday. And you're really looking at the rest of the road trip. Night games in Philly Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And as always, Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight, Nats extra, 30 minutes before every game and 30 minutes after. And Jose Bautista got hit with that pitch, diving down and in. Gio kind of turns his back on home plate and takes a walk. So Kevin Plowecki back in there. Flared one to right first time up for a hit. He's going to do it again. This one close to the line. Bryce Harper is going to have to chase it. Speeding for third Bautista. Glenn Sherlock will hold him as Harper one bounces at home. So a double for Plowecki. Well the bad news for the Nats is second third two outs. The good news is the pitchers hit. Just off the end a nicely placed double for Kevin Plowecki also known as Plow Dog. Jason Vargas is 19 for 81 as a big league hitter. Most of those at bats his first two years in the majors with the then Florida Marlins back in 05 06. So one up, one down, both in the zone, 0-2. Oh, there they are, Mercedes-Benz. Good Did block. Did you just say good block yeah. to Matt Wieters? <laughs> he 
certainly did. It's number 70 coming from Gio. One, two again. Foul tip. Wieters has it. Inning over. Two stranded. The Mets have left five. To the fifth. Weeders Taylor Depot straight ahead. Our nickname is Bass. Bryce reeling them in. Brought to you by Dominion National, providing innovative high value dental and vision benefits to area employers and individuals. Danny Espinoza is here. And everybody's smiling on a Friday night because it's the weekend. Dominion National. The Nats will be smiling if they get some runs off of Jason Vargas. He has a 7.67 ERA. They're going to figure him out here in the fifth. He's retired nine in a row. Nats traditionally have had trouble with lefties inside the numbers presented by PNC Bank. So lowest win percentage against lefties. 13 and 22. Light hitting Padres. We have the worst batting average in the league along with the Mets 235. So it's going to be Matt Wieters fouled off a bunch of pitches flew out first time and Dan Moore on the Nats catcher. Yeah we we've, we've talked Bob about how Matt Wieters has really been heating up offensively over the last few weeks and I mentioned that he's focusing on picking up the ball earlier something simple just getting the release point and making sure that he's seeing the pitch. Davey Martinez also noted I think something important here guys that Matt Wieters came back from a hamstring injury and he's really seen Matt get on his legs a little bit more. We used to talk about that with Daniel Murphy coming back from his knee injury but it's he thinks the same thing with Wieters guys that he's been able to kind of drive through his legs a little bit more and Davey's seeing that lead to a lot of success offensively for Matt as well. Nets have not scored a run since Ryan Zimmerman walked off the Phillies. Trying to get something going in the middle of this game. 67 pitches 39 strikes against Jason Vargas. You know, it's not easy hitting the hardest thing in the world and on given nights a major league pitcher a guy that led baseball and wins last year could have one of those nights but still when you see seven six seven ERA somebody's been hitting them.
Nice stroke by Matt Weider. Stayed back up the middle. It goes. And he's now 18 for his last 52. Leadoff man on for the Nats. Second time tonight. He looked hitterish his first time up. Flew out to left field. This time a base knock up the middle. So the third knock of the night for the Nats. And here comes Michael A. Taylor. Yeah, Vargas actually worked him up in the zone a bit to strike him out first time. That was a check swing and a foul. You know, if I was playing, I would. My nickname would be an advertisement. I'd try to make some money. You know, like NASCAR. Just put all kinds of different sponsors on the back of my jersey. Try to cash in You'd for a weekend. You'd have Lexus on your back this yeah, it's weekend? Yeah, just see how much money I could make. If I could fit Harris Teeter on the back of my jersey, whatever, whoever's going to pay me, I put Free whatever. Produce, Chico's bail bonds, whatever. <laughs> That'd be a good one. What a two. Swing and a miss, and Taylor down. Four of the last five batters struck out by Jason Vargas. Nissan pitch cast. Yeah, he does not look like a guy with the ERA. I told you earlier, he's got it going on here tonight. And that 86-87 on the inner half has been his best friend. It looks like it's 94 95 by the swings. Number eight man Wilmer Defoe pop fly to the catcher first time. Foul. Marlins have a run. Top of the fifth. Miami one Atlanta nothing. This guy throws looks different than the pitch he made before. Different speeds, eye levels, up and in, in and out. Players say a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Now it's 0 2 and the battle begins. Homer made an offer, no swing. Ton of hitting room right side. McNeil shaded up the middle. Swing and a miss. Seven strikeouts for Vargas of the 14 outs. He has recorded. Back in 15, the Nats were last shut out as many times as this year, and 13 as well. Yeah, the playoff year is low. Geo taking a big swing and following it.
tremendous arm speed on the changeup so far from Jason Vargas. When you watch him throw it, it's it's identical to his fastball. Not a big split. I mean, 87 on the fastball, 80, 81 on the change, but effective so far. He already tied his season high in strikeouts. Third time he's been at seven. And now he has eight. You got seven Marlins in May, seven Braves in August, and now eight Nets in late August. Both pitchers tonight have been on point. Jason Vargas is absolutely dealing so far in this one. Gio Gonzalez doing the same, just giving up one run. But so far, Vargas has eight strikeouts, no walks, just three hits given up. And Gio Gonzalez with a couple strikeouts, one run on five hits over four. So 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you can save. There's your game summary. Pitchers duel here at City Field tonight. Yeah, Geo 70, 40 strikes, 82 pitches, Vargas 50 strikes. And Rosario, base hit steal, scored on a Flores hit in the first inning, has been the damage so far. Top of the order for the Mets, Rosario McNeil Flores, bottom five. Change up had him pulling off that ball. Ryan Zimmerman chasing, watching, gets over there and picks it off one handed. Good play by Ryan, first out, fifth inning. All right, it's 2000's night, not tonight, but September 1st in Nats Park. 7.05 start against the Brewers. That's presented by Budweiser. So go to nationals.com and get tickets to 2000's night. What's 2000? 2000 to 2010, and that's the 2000's? Right? Yeah. What is 2000? That, that would be 11 years. Are we going to have a, inclusion? what do you call it from 2010 to 20? The teens. So we're going to have a teens night? <laughs> Give away Juan Soto jerseys? I'll let the marketing geniuses handle that one. I don't know how that goes. We can't offend that decade. Two and oh. Ground ball to second, fly ball to center. The 26 year old Jeff McNeil. 12th rounder back in 13. He had nine homers his first five years in the minor leagues, and he started slugging. Michael A. Taylor to his left to get it, and he throws a bullet back in there on one hop, and it almost took Wilmer Defoe off his feet. It had so much juice on it.
Loud noise here. Look at that ball hooking away from Michael Taylor. So oh. when you're playing center field, Carp, you usually don't see a ball hook like that. That was odd. Usually stays pretty true for a center fielder. And I think Michael A did a nice job adjusting with the hook line drive straight away center. That might have been a knuckleball. Just decided to hang a well a right from where we're sitting. Boomer Flores has had two good at bats. RBI hit to left. Scorched one up the middle last time, and Wilmer Defoe had to fight a hard ground ball that had touched the mound and changed directions a bit on its way to him. Oh, two now. Blue Jays have added a run and they lead the Phillies 4 1. Phil's batting top of the sixth at Rogers Center up in Toronto. They go home, we go there. Three games, night games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Runner had a good jump. Oh. Deal way off the bag by the time that ball was delivered and fouled off. It had to be a hit and run with the swing you saw right there, and he almost cleared out the men's dugout. Check this out. So there he goes, and he stayed back and almost took out the whole dugout. That wasn't a hit and run jump, though. I wonder if Wilmer Flores thought he missed the sign and just went emergency hack there late. Usually on a hit and run carp, you make sure the lefty goes to the plate. You don't get a good jump. Not like right. that one. Yeah. Well, that jump got Geo's attention. There he goes again. Fly ball to left. It'll back up Soto just a bit. And from second base, McNeil retreats two down. Did he retouch second? I don't think he retouched second. He stood on the base and then he just ran back. This could be a double play. It is. Yeah, he went a little past the bag, FP, and you're right. He stood on the base, the catch was made, and then he didn't retouch the base. He kind of ran around it. Mickey Calloway is saying, hold on. But I saw it like Ryan Zimmerman saw it. He pointed the base. Watch this. He steps on the base. Wilmer Deeks him. See him step off the base? He's got to step back on the base before he goes to first. Yeah, that was a move toward third, right? It was right? a move toward third. He didn't retouch, and that's an out. Double play. We'll call it 7 4, and I think he's still confused as to what happened.
But I hold true. Mummy just saw it's a one up the game. This could be big. Jeff McNeil got to second base, stepped over the base, and then just cruised back to first. And then Juan Soto threw it into Wilmer Defoe. LD just touches the base at the end. But he did not retouch the base. Jeff McNeil did. And Ryan Zerman saw it. We saw it up here. Gio saw it. Tag the base. Jeff McNeil, if you're reading his lips, is saying that Wilmer Defoe pushed him across the base with the fake tag. I thought Wilmer actually touched him with the tag. He said he pushed me across the base. Well, if that was the case, you still have to retouch the base on the backside. Here we go, top of the six. It just goes down as a 7-4 double play. He didn't push him across the base. No, he just panicked. Now Trey Turner flares one out to center. Vargas has Trey Turner 0 for 3. And now it's Rendon and Harper here in the sixth. Nats box score. Leading off the second, Zimmerman and Soto back to back singles. They never got beyond first and second. And the only other hit, Matt Weeder's clean single up the middle, leading off the fifth. 13 of the last 14 Nationals retired by Jason Vargas. Bullpen getting loose. They've been pretty good recently. Reaching out and hitting it pretty far with one hand is Rendon. Onto the track. Bautista grabs it. Already had a broken bat homer in this ballpark, and I thought we might have a one handed homer this year. 76 degrees, the ball isn't carrying like it did last time the Nats were here. He tried to smooth one out of here, kept his hands back nice, barreled it up with one hand, and you're wondering while the ball was in the air. And then you're thinking, cool temperatures, ball not carrying. Pretty good effort by Rendon. Here's Harper shift on. Seth Lugo for the Mets. Guess who has the most saves in their bullpen right now? Robert Gazelman, the former starter. Anthony Swarzak's back on the DL. They're piecing it together out there. Dan Coco, entire life flashing before his eyes on that one. You all right, Dan? Statcast AI powered by AWS. What was the sideline reporter catch probability on that? Truck says zero. Truck says <laughs> zero. That was the truck, Dan, not us. We thought you had a shot. One and two. Bryce didn't love that pitch. The ball? Got it? This is a different ball. Oh, <laughs> Paul, Paul, our team photographer, did not even flinch. I went running away, running.
Pass and brought to you by the new film, Operation Finale. Discover the true story of the hunt for Hitler's deadliest lieutenant in theaters August 29th. Big Apple, beautiful on this Friday night. Scoreboard looks kind of gross. Nothing but zeros up there for the Nats, three hits. So Geo's got to keep this thing close. Frazier, Bruce, Jackson, bottom six. Pitch number 82 is strike number 49. Hot shot. Base hit, past the dive of Anthony Rendon. Third time tonight the Mets have had their leadoff man on. So their box score, the two hits by Rosario and Flores, Wilmer's 48th RBI. They had two hits in the second, Bolt stranded. Hit batter Bautista in the fourth. And then McNeil on his own base running gaff doubled up at second base on the fly ball last inning. So Frazier checks in one for three. Here's Jay Bruce. Fly ball to center, ground ball to Defoe. He was in right field for the ground ball, but with a runner at first, he's on the infield for a possible double play. Rendon moving to an up the middle shortstop position. Jay Bruce pops it up right in his vicinity. First out, sixth inning. All right, MMA TV is available at a lower price, $49.99. You can watch every out of market regular season game plus. Get a free subscription to MOB at that premium. Visit MOB.tv to take advantage of this special offer. $49.99, all you can eat baseball. Austin Jackson, one for two. Having his usual good night at City Field to this point. Yeah, he's doing his job so far. Jason Vargas has just been a little bit better. Up the middle, off of Geo. And they get the force at second. Rendon to Defoe. Geo hopped off the mound after the ball hit him, puts his hands on his knees. Paul Lassard on the way out with Davey Martinez. It'll go as a 1-5-4 fielder's choice. That was a direct hit. Had to hit him in the shoe, it sounded like it. Yeah, left fluorescent green laces and then ricocheted right to Anthony Rendon. Oh, seems to be okay. Easy for us to say up here. He's saying, wow. Eighty seven miles an hour back at Geo. Dakota Glover. If and when needed. 
So two outs in the inning Jose Bautista. Pop up to short. And then a breaking ball got him in the foot last time. I wonder if the high top saved Gio right there. I couldn't tell exactly where it got him. And yeah, we can hear the boot all the way up here, couldn't we? That went right off the end of the bat from Bautista. I mean, that's the definition of booty to grounder, isn't it? It is. No error attached, right? So, tremendous numbers against the Mets. 26th start. Geo trying to go at least six innings for the 11th time this year. Two starts against the Mets this season at home, five and a third. Only gave up one run in a 3 2 loss April 7th. April 17th here, two runs in a 5 2 loss, or rather, 5 2 win. And that was five and a third. So he split even with these guys this year and as usual has one in this ball. Do a nice job of just keeping the ball down tonight. Being aggressive with his fastball. The sinker's been nice down the way to righties. When Gio's aggressive like any pitcher not feeling for it, he's at his best. He's really finishing his pitches tonight versus last time out. Tim Collins joining Coda Glover. Ball up 2 2. High in the air to left. Soto back with it. Last second adjustment. And that's it for the Mets. They've stranded six. Ryan Zimmerman coming up, and the guy you're looking at right after him. Well done by Gio so far.
Ryan Zimmerman to lead off in the top of the seven. Good news is the Nats are into the Mets bullpen now. It's our UPS store called to the bullpen. Need expert printing? The UPS store has you covered together. There's nothing they can't solve. 28 year old Seth Lugo, 44th appearance. He's made five starts, has a save, only 74 innings in 85, rather hits in 85 innings and 82 Ks. So he's found a pretty decent home in the bullpen for the Mets. And here's Ryan Zimmerman. Tight slider down and away. Ryan, two for seven career against him with. A solo home run. Michael Conforto in left field. So yep. double switch here. Lugo fastball slider curve change fastball 94 on average. the fastball up and in on right. Mercedes Benz pitch cast. Well, his pitches must look like 150 after Jason Vargas. Even though they're in the low to mid 90s. It's a good matchup for Juan Soto right here right now. 0 for 1 with a walk against Lugo. See him peek for the bunt right there. Frazier taking it away. I like the fact that he's just looking for it in a, a one nothing game. Yeah. I'm telling you he's thinking. We've seen bunts lead to good things this week, haven't we? Yeah, Juan Soto's bunt. Five run in. Jammed him. Playable. The angle for the shortstop Rosario two down. No better time to act than today PNC make today the day Cole Freeman a second baseman. From Metairie Louisiana New Orleans area 23 years of age. Raking for Hagerstown Freddie's shorter brother. <laughs> if he's related and could hit I'm in I'm fourth in. round pick out of LSU. Make today the day at PNC Bank. Matt Weeder standing tall on that left side of the plate. He's been raking from this side. His left-handed batting average this year up to 250. Weeder's 0 for 1 career against Seth Lugo. Got to be a green light situation here. One nothing game. It's getting late. Let it rip. Yeah, he's swinging it. Hit tonight, 18 for his last 52. Two homers, nine RBIs, last 16 plus. Run into one. Low in the zone. Couldn't do much with that. That's a ground ball waiting to happen. It's going to take. He had the green light. You can tell by his approach. Out of play left side. Grinder tonight. Out to the shortstop. 18 of the last 19 Nationals have been retired.
Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. In case you missed it, the only run scored in this affair was in the first inning. Ahmed Rosario led it off with a single. He would steal second. Didn't get the best jump, but a nasty sinker from Gio, not catchable. Jeff McNeil would get him to third, and then Wilmer Flores would pick him up. So there's the only run of the game. It was all the way back in the first inning. Gio has been outstanding here tonight. 93 pitches, 56 strikes against Plawecki, Conforto, and Rosario, bottom seven. Kevin Plawecki has gone the other way twice with flares, a single, and a double to right field. Mets have out hit the net 7 3. Other way, but there's a Zimmerman there. One out. Hardest ball he's hit tonight, unrewarded. Washington area Toyota dealers helping children and their families. For every strikeout by a Nats pitcher, it's $44 to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health. Something may be going on with Gio because Paul Lessard's coming out with Davey Martinez. I don't know maybe the foot is parking yeah. after the line drive last inning and you do not want him to alter his delivery in any way. It's getting tight. Probably tightened up last inning while the Nats were hitting and now. I think he said I'm fine. Talking Paul Lassard and Davy doing all the listening. I would say his DC lobbying efforts were successful. There's the last pitch. What do you see? I missed it. Dugout immediately. Well, he kind of jumped around and spun around once the ball was hit. Maybe landed on it funny. Michael Conforto, first appearance of the night. He's 0 for 2 with a walk career against Gio. Eighteen homers, 51 RBIs, 235 batting average. Ball two. Kind of hopping back up on one leg. Gio due to bat third in the eighth. If he can get through this inning, he's not bat third down one enough. I know that. Stays there. So he's, I think he's done right now. I think that's it. We'll see. Kind of hobbling around after that pitch. Maybe not. Chiefing it out. Into left and Soto pretty much right there. Two down. Couple of line drives. Joe Gonzalez and out away from going seven innings for the seventh time this year. Top of the order, Ahmed Rosario. On the edge, perfect. Getting it back from Weeders and ready to roll here in the seventh inning of work. I think it got him in his left shoe carp, and that's what he's pushing off with. Kind of overpowered the hitter right there, and Gio Gonzalez is going to tough it out. And get through seven. Nats need to get this guy some runs. He's 11 and one here.
represented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Mm -mm -mm. Right out of the popper. Now the Nats need somebody to get on base, maybe pop one. Uh oh. We're gonna have Adam Eaton batting for Michael A. Taylor to lead off the eighth. Spanky stashless. Defoe next, and then because Andrew Stevenson was called up the other day, they still have another left handed bat off that bench. And Eaton fouls it on the attempted bunt. Adam Eaton 0 for 3 career against Seth Lugo who threw 11 pitches seven strikes last inning to retire the side in order. Inside edge perfect pitch for Lugo. You know, the Nats have three hits. They're shut out to this point. It's pups in the park here at City Field. We haven't shown a dog all night, so it's our fault. I've been hearing one. I know. Someone's barking out there. Not happy with the strike zone, evidently. There's a Rottweiler right there on the left. It's a hyena, I think, right there with the cup on his snout. It's a real hyena. There's something to laugh about here. Eaton to the shortstop, Rosario. First out, eighth inning. Our Harris Teeter and the Nats have teamed up for a kids pajama set giveaway that Sunday September 2nd. So you get the trucker hat, the Jason Worth emoji shirt, the pajama set, the apron. It's amazing. First 10,000 kids ages 12 and under receive a cool Nats pajama set. I love this. For tickets visit nationals.com. Wear those on Christmas morning. Everybody the whole family wearing them maybe. If you're small enough to get into 12 and under pajamas. Snap on that curveball. So it's Defoe. Andrew Stevenson has stepped out to bat ninth. Great night for Geo. Can the Nats get him off the hook or get him a W? Somebody's got to get a board here. For Geo, seven innings, seven hits, one run. There's Stevo. Didn't walk anybody, hit a batter, two strikeouts, 103 pitches. 61 strikes. Yeah, he was locked in tonight, free and easy, finishing his pitches. I saw Aaron Nola coming yesterday. I mean, he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. I did not see Jason Vargas coming tonight. Dakota Glover will be next. Late swing by Defoe and he's down on strikes. Second K for Lugo. Tomorrow, Tanner Roark. Six starts, five and zero, oh, with a 163 ERA since the break. Six to one strikeout to walk ratio. Eight and three career against the Mets in 21 games, 15 starts. Zach Wheeler, eight and six, but pitching extremely well. We are told. 3:30 p.m. That's extra tomorrow. Masson two. First pitch, 410. 405, we're told. They lopped off five minutes. Take five minutes fewer to get to the ballpark tomorrow. So 
Today was a record for Friday. We made it here in like 30 minutes. I cannot hotel. believe it's a new world record. I think everybody left town or didn't go to work today. It was crazy. We were in the Queens Midtown Tunnel in like 12 minutes from the hotel. Usually Friday's an hour trip to the yard from downtown. Today. Yeah. It was like we were in a helicopter shaped like a bus. Andrew Stevenson has actually hit against Lugo in the past. 0 for 1, ground out. Looking to lay a bunt down the third baseline with Frazier back some. Almost stepped on the plate right here on the bunt attempt. If you do that, you're out. Not as close as I thought live. He wasn't even near it. Check that. Taking some healthy rips. Steve O is. Ninety seven from Seth Lugo. Louisiana matchup here. Nice take on the slider down and in. We have Youngsville, Louisiana in the box and Metairie, Louisiana on the hill. 2 2. Now good at bat shaping up for Andrew. A runner any way you can get one here. Trey Turner on deck. Nats have had one base runner since the second inning. Fighting. I like the at bat here. Wow. All over the place here. Pretty good fight going on between these two. Wonderful time for his first career homer. That into the home stand, but he can't get to the high fastball. And now it's the bottom of the eighth in New York. Nationals baseball on mass and brought to you by American Standard Heating and Air. Find your local independent American Standard Heating and Air dealer at midatlanticcomfort.com. Chrysler building in the distance, and right now it's a one run game getting awfully late.
make this a one nothing game. Join the Potomac Nationals at home through Sunday, August 26th. Tonight is wrestling night, so that doesn't matter because it's almost over. Saturday night, take home a Tanner Roark Team USA bobblehead. So tomorrow night is your night to go check out the Peanuts while the Nats are in New York. Yeah, getting late for grappling. Coda Glover to try to keep this a one nothing game. He's got McNeil, Flores, and Frazier. And for Coda, seventh appearance. Four and a third innings, three runs, seven hits. Four walks, just a couple of strikeouts. So Bryce Harper to center. Adam Eaton stays in to play right. Now for Coda's fastball average in 95.8 this year. He's only thrown that 33% of the time. A lot of cutters at 92. Change-ups at 85. Occasional curveball. Matching up with McNeil for the first time. That was his changeup. Yeah, Turner, Rendon, Harper for the ninth. So key to keep this a one nothing game. Good looking. Ball sliding down and in. As mentioned earlier, Robert Gesellman is now their closer. He has seven saves. Got two great innings of work. Seth Lugo. If it's one nothing, you retire Turner, Rendon, Harper, and maybe Zimmerman. You're earning your money. It's not an easy save. It's got to be one nothing. Three one. Leadoff man walked. More on Coda Glover. Here's Dan. Bob, I talked to Coda Glover earlier on today. We've seen a lot of off speed stuff from him and cutters as well. When he's got that fastball, as you guys were just saying, in the mid to upper 90s, I asked him about, you know, kind of the balance between getting ahead with your heater and making sure you're not grooving anything. He said he talked a lot with Max Scherzer, who told him you need to be pitching up here. He, Coda pointed out that Jordan Hicks in St. Louis throws 102 and didn't strike anybody out. So he said, I need to be mixing my pitches and being really cognizant of the fact that I'm not just throwing heaters. High in the air for Adam Eaton, the one pitch out. Wilmer Flores retired. Well, not just throwing heaters, but you have to establish it in the strike zone early in the count. You have to make me aware of 96, 97. So throw it to get ahead and then pitch after that. But when you have a good fastball, it makes, you know, even the good hitters have to gear up for that. If you don't throw it for strikes, then I don't have to gear up for it. So key for him is getting ahead with that heater. And Davey Martinez going double barrels. He wants to keep this one nothing. Todd Frazier faces Glover for the first time. a big lead. He looks like he has interest.
He's yeah, going. Got a lead. Yeah, he was going. He fell down. Did you see that? <laughs> he had to put his hands down to keep from falling. He had such a lean going that he lost his balance. He put both hands to the ground. He was going all the way. Watch this. Top of your screen. Look at that. Four point stance. He was a defensive nose guard right Yeah. There. Glover called an audible. He had nowhere to go. Is a tardy swing. Two down. And so Davy Martinez, Jay Bruce coming will bring in a left. Lover will walk a man, strike out a man, get two thirds here in the eighth, and be responsible for Jeff McNeil at first base. Eighth inning wheels turning in this one nothing game at City Field. A lefty, 29 year old Tim Collins. Overall, for this year's Nats, 23rd appearance, 15 hits and 15 innings. And the rest of the numbers. So the lefty lefty thing is a 167 proposition. Nine years old, five seven one seventy. Fastball, curveball, change. Fastball ninety three on average. Runner on the move, and Weeders can't come up with. It. Jeff McNeil's been dying to run, and he finally makes it. I mean, you can see him leaning again. He kind of got a little antsy right there, flinched, and then took off. Matt Weeders trying to be in a hurry. Made the pitch a little low, and he was popped out of his stance and made it even lower. McNeil, second major league steal. Time given. Jay Bruce might have looked up and saw Trey Turner almost sprinting to the left field side of second base and asked for time. One one. Like against left handers when Jay Bruce is right, he hits the ball the other way. 
That one sky deep to right center. Harper chasing. It's gone. Three nothing Mets. Well, that one hurts big time. Trying to keep this a one nothing game and Jay Bruce. With a simple approach, simple swing, smooths one out of here to make it three nothing. Bryce Harper gave it a good chase, ran out of room, and it just goes over the fence. Three ninety seven, two run homer, three nothing. Austin Jackson next. The Nats have now given up as many home runs this year as they've as they've hit 153 on both sides of the ledger. And that's 12 consecutive games in which the Nats have given up at least one home run. One two pitch. This would be out of play. Right in there. To the ninth we go. Now the Nats need a whole lot more from Turner, Rendon, Harper, and maybe Ryan Zimmerman. Down by three, top of the ninth. It's time for your four drive of the game. Well, how about Wednesday? Ryan Zimmerman with his 11th walk-off homer, his 15th walk-off hit. And if he does it here tonight, it won't be a walk-off. It'll be a go-ahead homer, and he's going to need three base runners on in front of him. So here are your local four dealers for great savings on cars, trucks, and SUVs. They can't do that on the road. But there would be a celebration in the dugout should he go grand slam here in the night. Accosted by Matt Grace. Though. All right, here we go. Top of the order. Robert Gesellman has seven saves. He's had six blown saves, but some of those were like six, seventh inning things, giving up a lead before he became the closer. Trey Turner is two for 11 against him. With a base on balls. 
do or die for the Nats here. Fastball slider, curveball change, four pitch closer. Used to be a starting pitcher, as you probably know. Philly still trailing. Ninth inning at Toronto. Braves still trailing. Eighth inning at Miami. And the count goes even on Trey Turner. Some base runners on, see what happens. Run back 96. This paint. Paint. I'll tell you, two X starters, Lugo and Gazelman, putting on a show so far. Foul tip, strikeout. Some good numbers against rather good Robert Gesellman. Three doubles on that list. That breaking ball while outside, one and two. This ball hit well out to right center. Short hopping the wall. Anthony Rendon into second with a one out double. Now two more runners needed. Got 30 second double of the season foot down early and just slapping one in the gap. So nice piece hit by Anthony. Right now the. Size of those add on runs for the Mets in the bottom of the eighth. So big. So Bryce Harper trying to cut into it. Zimmerman next. Bryce career two for six with a homer and five walks against Robert DeSelman. As a hitter was hard facing a guy that used to be a starter, and now you face him once. You know, you face Gazelman as a starter, you got a good idea of what he's going to do to you the second, third time up based on what happened the first time, whether you're successful or not. You know, if he was successful, he got you out with a certain pitch, you'd look for that pitch. If you hit the ball hard on a certain pitch, you'd look for another pitch. But when you face a guy once and he's throwing a little bit harder, 
it's a whole different ball game. So now all those at bats I had against Gazelman, it's a different story. I'm facing him once, he's throwing harder, and I don't know what kind of pattern he's going to feature because it's just one AB. Yeah, some starters will tell you it's fun to become a reliever. Pedal to the metal for one inning. 2-1, that was a good take by Bryce. And that ball tailing away, unreachable. Two balls, two strikes. Trying to get on for Ryan. You know, all he can ask here is to get that tying run into the batter's box. Two strike approach, spread them out. No stride. Little pine tar there for extra grippage. Trying to pick up that guy or more. Struck out Turner and Harper, and it's up to Ryan Zimmerman. That pretty nasty 95 run back. Watch this. He starts this off the plate end of Bryce, and it just got a lot of heavy sink late for strike three. Ryan Zimmerman, five out of eight against Gazelman. One RBI, one base on balls, and now trying to get it to Soto. Ground ball right side, and for the second time this year, the Nats have been shut out in back to back games. It happened in late June at Tampa Bay. It happens at home yesterday and here in New York tonight. Final words from City Field in a moment.